Welcome back to Batman Arkham Asylum. Um, first off, what we're going to be doing here is that apparently this is the place, the Batmobile is actually where um, Gordon was initially, like, jumped. And Batman's looking around to see if he can find something that'll help give him a clue to find out where Gordon is. Like his uh, lucky pipe here. <gasps> Wait, I, I never knew he had a lucky pipe. Oh, it's been spilled all over the floor. But no, no, that that's actually a good thing it's spilled all over the floor because... He, yeah, because like he said, he actually left Batman a trail to follow. Okay, I'm assuming that flashing... Tobacco tracking. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that flashing was just you kind of just activating it on and off. Well, no, that's that's automatic. It's basically shifting through, like, different, like, for lack of a better word, locating filters. Like, it would oh, okay. be, like, like a tracking between locating a liquid, locating an air thing, so on and so forth. Oh, and also, our first use of the explosive gel. Oh, Remember, non-lethal explosive gel. Whoa! And like you mentioned, it's basically a oh, nice. So like you mentioned, it's basically like a Zelda bomb. Is there any? Does it? Does the game make it pretty obvious what can and can't be explosive gelled? Um. As a matter of fact, uh, yes. If you use your detective vision. Oh, okay. You technically can place it on. You can technically place it on a lot of things, but only certain walls can be like completely destroyed. Otherwise, it just makes like a little bang. Yeah. Which can sometimes help incapacitate foes, but. Yeah, I was say I could I could see you doing some really fun stuff like being able to um, like put it around a corner and then lead some enemies after you before triggering it behind them. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I do want to say one other thing because as you noticed, um, Celia and Matt aren't with us at the moment. I think Matt's at work and Celia's just uh, recovering from schoolwork. On oh, no, the way, you guys hate those excuses. I mean, they got kidnapped by Killer Croc and need to be rescued. But anyway, right. jokes aside, no, no, she's just been put through the she's just been put through the Arkham Educational Facility. Yeah, in the visitor center. Anyway, continue. Anyway, um, yeah, they're not here. What I'm wanting to do with both Asylum and I'm also going to do this with City is that I'm going to try to be very <laughs> fluid when it comes to attendance because one thing that we tend to have an issue with commentaries, I think we brought up before, but sometimes some commentaries we have are kind of dependent on certain people like being there, which means we would have to like put delays. Like, uh, say for example, um, James has a playthrough of the Link's Awakening remake that we're going to do eventually. He wants Seelie to be in then that, but oh, turns out Seelie's sick. Looks like we're going to have to push that commentary back for about another week or so. I'm basically organizing both the Arkham games to make sure we don't come across that problem. Right. So, I mean, yeah, just to be a little more, you know, lenient and just go with the flow. Those lips are hypnotically luscious. Wait, why did I say that? I'm so sorry! So, do you think that's actual lipstick, or did he just did he just beat someone to a blade pulp and then you said what to you know fashion his lips? Either way, um, I know that I know that's how it is in certain incarnations. Um, I guess it really kind of varies, but yeah, th that's something interesting about this visitor center. Um, if you go to here like after certain events, like after a certain like enemy encounter or something, he actually will say like different things. Uh. Are every are multiple areas in this game? Did multiple areas function under that first person view, or just the visitor center? Just the visitor center. Okay. Just the visitor center, and whenever you're underneath in an air duct or whatever. Okay. I'm Batman. <laughs> yep. I don't know, so I like uh, real it. quick, um, yeah, this guy's hiding because he sees those mooks over there. Um, Batman, while while he's giving the lowdown to Batman, um, Jordan, Batman. would you like to give us what your um, history with the Zabat? Don't mind if I do. So. My brother and I, we uh, grew up with uh, Batman, mostly the animated series, uh, ever since we were kids. And I thought it was a pretty interesting series. I liked all the characters. I really liked um, the stories and whatnot. And since then, I've been following up on other stuff that's Batman related. Like, for example, uh, the one uh, show from the 2000s that Steve and I started marathoning, uh, The Batman. Oh, the Batman. Yep. Mm -hmm. As well as, um, what else did I watch? I know I definitely watched Return of the Joker, and, um, I think, if I recall correctly, I think this is one of the first Batman games that I saw my brother play, and uh -huh. when I saw that, I was pretty intrigued to hear the voices again, to see how far it's come since then, and when I saw it was on a more, uh, I don't want to fully say mature scale because I don't want people to take that in a wrong way. But you know what I mean. Well, it's it's on they a definitely different... get a 
They, they get away with a lot more in this than they do the animated series. Yeah, that's what I mean. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay, so Batman isn't just for kids. It, it's it's an all-around kind of thing. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. It's much deeper than that. To a point where the later Arkham games, or at the very least Arkham Knight, literally got away with an M rating. Mm-hmm. Uh, honestly, oh. Oh, hello. Hey, Holly. That's a Why, field. hello there. Scram, yeah. Oh, you can't interrupt a woman with her me time. Oh, Gordon. Oh. Oh. Yeah, well, you're no better, bucko. That was my favorite mug, Holly. Anyway, um, so I, I think it was either Logan or Jordan pointed out the fact that, like, yeah, the opening is blocked by a force field, so we're pretty much going to have to find another means of entering the uh, hospital section of the asylum. Yeah. Anyway, uh, if I can just continue from what I was saying. So, um, mm-hmm. since then, I've been wanting to get into other Batman or DC-related stuff, like uh, Injustice, Gods Among Us. I definitely have that, and I'm hoping I can cover that for the channel. We'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, and as well as uh, some of the later stuff, like uh, Assault on Arkham. Um, what else have I seen? The the Lego Batman stuff and mm-hmm. a bunch of others. But um, in general, I just really like uh, the Batman series because of how uh, well developed these characters are. And uh, some of them just really grew on me, especially Harley, because I love voicing her in my videos. Mm-hmm. He definitely has a really fun, like, he definitely has a really fun cast of villains all most of them that you love to hate it's really good like they have yeah i think it's like well the idea is that i guess you have to make up for the lack of personality that batman usually has at least when yeah, he's i was on about the to job. say i was about to say it's funny that you say that logan and bring it up it's not like yeah batman i would argue probably has like the most famous gallery of like villains some would argue to a point where it's like the villains kind of get more attention and spotlight than batman himself right yeah well, I mean, batman, batman, batman himself it can be can have his moments but it's like it's also a case where you kind of have to have your you have to have your jelly alongside your peanut butter. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I I also and also in terms uh, of like it be DC, strawberry or grape flavored is another story. Right, but then yeah, and then in terms of like DC, grape. yes, that's a whole other thing. Grape. And then in terms of but then in terms of DC heroes, like I think we've mentioned this before. Is like I am absolutely a proponent of. I definitely I know Batman could beat Superman any day just because of like yeah. the know how and stuff. And I and I and I frankly think that Batman's more interesting of a character because for the most part Batman stories are typically more grounded and no superpowers are typically involved. It's just one man's intellect and excessive brawn against another. Well, I guess you say no superpowers involved. That kind of depends on the villain he fights. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, for the most part. Like, when it's Penguin or Riddler or Joker or, to an extent, Two-Face. Like, it's typically never like, oh my gosh, I'm going to... Okay. And we'll get around to this when we get to the actual climax of this game. Batman, to me, has never been a match of who can punch the other guy before they stop moving. Yeah. There's always been... It's always been that whole detective-like aspect to it. The whole, like, plot thickening. Which appar- which apparently DC is very half and half on these days because you because every other time they just like to they just like to call upon the Bat God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah. That, sorry if it seems like I'm taking a while. But I think I guess like while I was recording this, I sometimes get a little indecisive on what upgrades I need to get. No, no, it's fine. There, there, no, yeah, you're it, it good. Like... Now, are there any other are there any other um are there any abilities that you can unlock after the fact? Or are you pretty much like shown all that you can get from the from the get go? Oh, uh, well, basically, every option that you saw in that upgrade menu are pretty much the only things you're going to be able to unlock. Okay. Alright, and... Ba-da-da. I'm Batman! Whee! Saving your life. Ah. Yeah, I'm sure he's not ma- I'm sure he's not going to make any noise. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's actually funny you say that, because the minute you do an inverted takedown, they actually will rush right to the place where you did at. So is that why you would then uh, throw your batarang to, like, you know, knock him down or something? Well, speaking of knockdown, this guy is doing a really good job of staying in front of this um, wall. I think it's about time he gets a break. Yeah, he deserves some me time. <laughs> well, if he was already getting some, then all of a sudden, then you just had to come along and just, you know, give it to him. Thank goodness these guys never know to, uh, 
look up. Mm. Yeah, thank God. Nah. But yeah, this stuff I like. This I this is I still man, gosh, just to you know transition from the other superhero thing we did. This is what I wanted from like the Spider-Man thing is that if you're good enough with the stealth, you don't have to worry about a mop of characters. Like just go to town. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the the stealth is definitely one of my favorite parts, and they definitely do like up it as the series goes. Like, for example, the detective mode that you see me pop up now and then uh -huh. in Arkham City, they start introducing enemies that will actually have jammers that can actually like futz around with your detective mode. Oh. oh. Yeah, they they, they definitely ahead, build they definitely build up the difficulty with, like the further the series goes along. Sometimes to an obnoxious mm -hmm. degree, as noted in Origins. Right, and... Yeah. Well, wait. Origins is only if you go through New Game Plus, and even then, it's not, like... It takes getting used to, but I... It's not the worst. Okay. Um, oh. Would it be too early to, to ask, like, what is probably one of your favorite bat gadgets in this game? Um, oh, first off, Bunt. Nice. As far as, like, favorite bat gadgets, Bat Spank. I don't really have, like, a particular favorite. I honestly think that they're all, like, oh. very... Yeah. Why? He should have been the crotch! He did nothing. Yeah, no, he did plenty. Yeah, well, of course they did something. These poor doctors, they had him at hostage. True. You're safe now. Okay, now I gotta wait for this other one to get up for some reason. Come on, get up. Up and at him. As far as, like, what favorite gadgets I have, I, I don't think I really have a favorite. They're all, like, pretty useful in their own right, and definitely, like... It, like, you definitely will put them through their paces in here. I think the other games kind of do a better job of, like, really diver diversifying. Maybe not diversifying, but, like, getting a lot out of your gadgets. But as far as, like, here goes, it's fine because of just the more, I guess, more condensed, like, design compared to City. Okay. I'll say, yeah, now we have a particular assignment, so these two aren't the only doctors we need to take care of. Apparently, the Joker's men took three other doctors to, like, other parts of the hospital, and now we're pretty much going to have to go and uh, rescue them. So, off we go. Um, all these x-rays look way off to me. They do. Yeah, and an interview tape. I said an interview. Ooh. Oh, I get what I was doing here. I was trying to... Yeah, the reason I'm futzing about here is because I thought that there was an Easter egg in this room, but I'm getting it confused with, like, a different room. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. I feel like that head would have been the solution to a one, at least one Riddler puzzle. Oh, that could actually uh, be This one right here. Killer Croc's cell. Oh. Oh, he's unhinged. Um, uh, that was his old cell, anyway. I'm happy they at least allow... I'm, I'm, I'm at least happy they allowed him to decorate it in his own personal way. Um... Is there a part when you're you mentioned that uh, interview tape that we glossed over for now? Yay! Uh, with you're that, saying about the interview tape? I would say with the interview tape, I'm assuming that's just you know audio log, just fluff, like just some fun. Yeah, basically, like we heard a bit of it. It's basically just like little bits of like character, like that take place before the events of the game. Like for example, like uh, with Scarecrow, it shows him like doing like his usual experiments before the events of the game. Mm -hmm. Like Riddler, like getting one of the doctors very annoyed, and also like implying that he was able to do his own thing while Joker was making his big plan. One in particular is when you find Harley's, which is basically just kind of like a slightly abridged version of Mad Love. Huh. Oh yeah, I like that one. And actually, since we were talking about that, I remember uh, one of the... I don't want to say it's one of the first videos you did, but it was an old video that you and Laura did of that scene. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the, basically it was kind of like a, an amalgamation of how the Arkhamverse uh, did it and the original story did it. Hmm. Yeah, it was really cool. Okay. Okay, so here's our first, the first Doctor we have to save, and apparently it looks like uh, Aaron Cash is here as well, uh, being locked up with him. Who's Aaron Cash? He is a guard who, as you can tell by that, his oh. hooked hand, he got that after a particularly nasty experience with Killer Croc, so he had it replaced with that prosthetic. Ah. Oh, I got the metaphor! <laughs> yes, and he's he's kind of like a reoccurring ally to Batman. He appears in pretty much every game except for Origins. Well, I guess now now I understand why they kept you know, mentioning TikTok and Captain Hook. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. That's not very That's funny. Let the crocodile. The animated movie was far better. Oh. Batman. Ow! Ooh. He hit him in the shin. Dude. My shin hurts so much it makes my headache. That's a... <laughs> off artist. Man, that's an illegal maneuver. Oh, 
we can land. Well, he's certainly taking it well. Yeah. But um, 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 I forgot. Did we ever wow. like get? I was about to say I forgot. Did we ever get uh, your uh, Batman history out, Logan? Um, I think we did, yeah. And I just mentioned again the Nolan, just the Nolan movies and some parts of the Bruce Tim special. And I, beyond that, I I remember seeing a lot of like trailers for Batman Beyond. Never actually watched it that faithfully. Um, Batman. I've, I've seen. I was about to say I've seen Batman Beyond like sort of sporadically. The only part of Beyond I've seen from beginning to end is Return of the Joker. Same. Bye. For me, it was mainly, um, Batman for me as a kid growing up was more of a, oh, it's on, I guess I'll watch it while it's on. I, I didn't actively search out, um, stuff like that. Yeah, that's fair. And I think we already asked James his experience with Batman, didn't we? James? I'm pretty sure you guys completely ignored me at that point. Holy crap. Oh, well, well, I, why I don't thought you... we did... Or maybe either that or all I, I only talked about my experience with the Arkham games, not so much Batman as a well, whole, so... Oh, maybe okay. that was it. Yeah, I was about to say, it was with Arkham. Like, how... Do you have any experience with Batman as a whole? Well, I do recall my early... Like, one of my earliest recollections of with Batman in particular was either through the animated series as it was airing on Toonami, or, more infamously, when Cartoon Network had this whole block um, dedicated to the Super Friends... Oh yeah. oh yeah, I forgot about the Super Friends. I used to watch that for a time being. Yeah, and it's just as corny as it sounds. Sounds like it. Yeah, it is. But for its okay. time, it I... wasn't too bad. <laughs> I mean, I do remember actually rewatching it not that long ago, and it, like the one thing that immediately struck to me is the fact that every hero and villain literally had the exact same personality depending on their allegiance. And it oh was, really? Yeah. Like. Everyone, like, the heroes were all the goody-two-shoes that had to constantly explain the situation, and then the villains, well, they were all just the villains. They were just, were evil for for evil's sake. Oh, no well, motivation. That, that's just... Well, that was pretty much, that's pretty much how writing for kids shows was back then. It was yeah. super simple. And I, like, I do definitely remember at least a good handful of the uh, characters that were used in that show. Like, I definitely remember in the villain side, we had Lex Luthor being the mastermind behind the Hall of Evil. And right. amongst amongst his ranks, there was Bizarro, there was Cheetah, there was um, uh, Solomon Grundy, and right. maybe a couple others I don't immediately remember. But then from the superhero side, of course, there's Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, and Aqualad. Um, and I I forget the good dude's name. Black Lightning, I think, was his name. Black Falcon. Oh, the black, oh, well, no, 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 he's no, no the, the TV dude. show. Are you about Cyborg? No, no, I know. I think he's talking about that TV show with the guy with the the, fu the fuzzy hair. What was his name? Um, not not Static Shock. If, if that's oh. what you're thinking, it's not Static Shock. It was a different, similar idea, different. Thing. I think it's Black okay, Lightning. Probably is Black Lightning. No, I don't oh, yeah, think whatever. it was Black Lightning. I'm pretty sure it was Black Falcon. I don't Black, remember a DC Black, character being named Black Falcon. Is Black yeah, Falcon. Here, hold on. Is, I'm gonna do is, research. Is, 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 if, the, if there is, is he associated with Lightning? Uh, I'm not sure. The only uh, other character I remember. But, well, whatever the case, yeah, like, I mean, the kinds of characters they had was at least varied, but the personalities was a different story, and the only other thing I remember was that, well, Casey Kasem was sha was a <laughs> Shaggy, Robin in that, inter that iteration. Well, to be fair, he also was Shaggy. That, oh, of course. And, um, I do recall seeing at least one episode that also had, um, what was that guy's name? The, the, uh, the, the magical imp with the, with his name spelled backwards. Oh, McSpetlick. Yeah, him. Oh, okay. It was Black Vulcan, uh, aka this guy. Oh, Black okay. Vulcan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Vulcan. Vulcan. I can see working more. Yeah. Okay. I can see that. Yeah, that's him. He does, and actually, yeah. yeah, he does actually. His color palette, even his color palette, does look a lot like Static Shock, huh? I, I wouldn't doubt that he was the guy that that inspired Static Shock later on. The only other DC Possibly. character I was aware of was um, Valkyrie. I think was her name, or Hawkwoman. Uh, yeah, Hawk Girl. Hawk Girl, which looks more like a Valkyrie. And... Uh, yeah. uh, actually speaking of which, yeah, that's like the that's the other bit major uh, thing about that I know that has Batman in it, Justice League. That was literally, but I was pretty much like on on top of that show for a, a decent while. At least I ended up stopping right around the time they made, made that sequel series. But otherwise, yeah, hundreds, I I enjoyed hundreds. my time with it, and I definitely remember like probably the one Green Lantern I remember the most, which is John Stewart. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh no, yeah. No, they had a no. They had a fantastic TV. They had a fantastic run with that TV show. Yeah, and, I'm, and it still saddens me that it got it got taken off of uh, Netflix while I was marathoning it. Yeah. It's true. 
<laughs> funny enough, that, funny enough, the, the the episode I actually ended off on before that Netflix took it off was literally the episode where, I mean, laughable as it sounds, Solomon Grundy died. Oh uh, yeah, that I think that was like the episode. Um, yeah, that I, I'm trying to remember. Like, what, did Hot Girl not have her helmet on? Because if so, that would be an unlimited. Uh, it wasn't unlimited. I remember. I don't. I remember that much. But Hawk Girl was definitely a focus. A focus for that episode. And well, she did solemn the death of Solomon Grundy. Right. And then I remember Martian Manhunter. Like, I didn't know a lot about him. He was very much the um... tall boy. Yeah, not the. And I was gonna say not the rogue element, but he was very much the mysterious. Like, I never knew anything of the. I thought. I thought for there was a time where I thought he was just an original character for the TV show. I mean, kind of felt the same way, but no. Like, he's definitely been around and. I mean, to his credit, he's he had some, he had his uh, uses in the in the original run of the show. Oh yeah, I really like Sean. Think of this as a preview to the main. Also, I forget if it was an unlimited or 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 the original series, but there was like this whole bit where he and he and Clark were literally visiting Clark's family for Christmas. Oh yeah, that was the original series. That was during the Christmas episode. And that was a classic. And apparently, Superman still believes that Santa Claus is real. Hey, hey, hey! Superman believes in him. Rodan believes in him. I think they got. I think these guys have some validity to their beliefs. Well, what's funny? I really do love that episode. Like, there's that. There's the whole thing with Flash trying to get like this toy for this orphanage, which was really cute. And, yeah. and of course, there was like some nice like romance building between the uh, the what would you say between the Green Lantern and Hawk Girl. <laughs> I will admit, as much as I love that episode, the only thing that I'm a, li a little bit miffed about is that they don't show what uh, Bats and Wonder Woman do for their holiday. Like, they implied that, like, Bats was practically begging to be on Watch Duty because, you know, the Batman likes to spend his Christmas alone. Oh, of course. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, actually, one other episode I, I mainly remember was, um, I know Jean and and The Flash, I think, were part of it. Or, not Jean, uh, Jon Stewart and The Flash, <laughs> and maybe to it, Batman might have been part of them as well, but I, it was the episode where they got warped to that that other reality that essentially was like an old-fashioned superhero TV show. Oh yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. It wasn't cool Batman. It was. It was. It was Green Lantern, Hawk Girl, Flash, and Martian Manhunter. But I, I, I remember that episode. That was a fun one. I remember this one episode. This is the, by the way, this is the big gushing. Like we just talk about the show all day, hour. I remember this. I mean, one it's not like I had anything better to talk about throughout this entire video. Well, I do like. Oh, I will say right now, looking at where uh, hype's been running around and stuff, I like the openness of these. Like they don't feel linear when you're inside of them. Like you can go through vents around like doors and stuff, and I, 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 it doesn't feel like I'm just walking down a hallway. Cut to us literally walking down a hallway. But you see what I'm trying to get across there. Careful. Yeah, we get you. Actually, I guess we should get back to the game. Uh, it sounds like we're on the trail for one Dr. Young. Oh yeah, she's the last doctor that we have to uh, rescue. And, um, like I said, not, I guess I can go ahead and spoil it, because Matt technically spoiled part of it earlier. Uh, the reason why Dr. Young is important is because not only is she one of the more respected doctors here, she also was one of the last doctors to kind of experiment on, like, a particular project that they've been working on that... Well, yeah, it's a project that she's hoping would help, like, the inmates in Arkham. However, she doesn't know that it's technically being used for a far more jokey premise. Hey, it's not going to get through. What do you think that was going to accomplish? Yeah, that was, a, that was a muscle memory mistake. What you're supposed to do is pull out your explosive gel. Make a cute little smiley three... face. Look yeah. at him. There... Well, here's the thing. Like, there are three walls around this um, room that they're in. You have to detonate all three of them to take out all these mooks that are surrounding her. Oh, they'll yeah. blow her up. Okay, so okay, so, so that's so that's why there are three individual gel things. It, it basically means you can you can detonate three char you can detonate up to three charges at a time. Yes. Yes. Gotcha. And you have to be careful when you're sneaking about because if they do see you through the uh, windows, they will shoot the doctor. The fact that they actually can't see the windows means they're at least smarter than the average goon. Careful, mm -hmm. careful. Oh, wait, the trophy. Easy does it. Actually, is there a third? Yeah, no, I, th okay, I think, I I think the two would be enough to take them all out. Mm -hmm. Uh, and... yeah, there's only, two, there's only two areas to worry about, so lay down the detonator. Hope she can duck. Do, 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 do. Whoa! Pray to God none of these hit her. Oh, no, they don't. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm amazed none, no debris hit her at all. Oh, an upgrade. Oh, well, that didn't take that long debris. at all. 
Yeah, basically the upgrade that the the upgrades that you can get to the gel is you have a setting where you can be able to like detonate them like one by one because usually if you detonate more than one at a time they all blow up at once. Mm -hmm. There's an upgrade where you can choose which ones you can detonate without them all firing off at once. That's and then there's yeah. another one is a proximity one where it'll automatically detonate when it senses someone coming by. That's also that that that'd be very good for setting up ambushes. So yeah, here's Doctor Young. We saved her. For now. Yes. Yeah. I almost forgot. They said they were moving through the facility. <gasps> hunting down the other doctors. Well, that uh -oh. ain't good. Good thing we saved every one of them already. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I purposely left her last. Oh, I mean, oh, so, yeah. oh, so you can actually go against... So you can actually go after the doctors in any order. Yep. So again, yeah, see, okay. that's why I like. I like this non-linearity to it. Mm-hmm. When it allows, when it allows to, it can be pretty free roaming. You know, in spite of the more restricted like environments compared to the likes of City. Oh, now we're gonna oh, be introduced. Oh, bad man, you spoiled the surprise. Ah, oh, you spoiled the surprise. <laughs> You're welcome, Logan. This is a new type of enemy that you have to deal with. Um, knife wielding mooks. They're pretty much like you can't attack them directly. You have to stun them first, and then you can hit them. Ah. Oh. Do we get this here, Alfred, at all in this game? In this game, no. Aww. Oh well. I mean, they remember, mm. they, he, he definitely gets more prominence in um oil in a city, but here, not so much. Alrighty. Yeah. Right now, your only contact is Oracle. Oh! <gasps> I got fire ants are in my pants. Who did this? <laughs> no. Who did this? We'll find out who did this in the next part. Oh, rats. Okay. <laughs> Till next time, everybody. Bye!